Ethiopian Tribune has attended recent webinar where Professor Mamo Muchi was keynote speaker and presenter. We'll be bringing the highlights of his presentation and lectures to our readers and audiences. Who is Professor Mamo Muchi? Professor Mamo Muchi is currently a DSTNRF research professor at the Faculty of Management Sciences, Chuan University of Technology, South Africa. He previously served as a director of the Research Center on Development Studies and International Relations, Department of History, International and Social Studies, Aalborg University in Denmark. Professor Mamo Muchi was educated in USA and in Europe. He obtained his MPhil and DPhil degrees in Development Economics and Science, Technology and Innovation Studies from Sussex University, England under the supervision of the renowned innovation scholar, the late Freeman of the Ides Spru. He also studied Measurement Science in Petrograd, Russia. He has taught and researched at various universities in the USA and Europe including Cambridge University and the Middlesex University UK, the University of Aalborg, Denmark and Amsterdam University Netherlands. Professor Muchi is a fellow of the South African Academy of Sciences and the African Academy of Sciences. He is also currently adjunct professor at the Adama Science, Technology University, Addis Ababa University and University of Gonda, Ethiopia. He has been a senior research associate at the Oxford University. He is currently the chairman of the advisory board of African Talent Hub of the Community Interest Company to raise funds for making Africa the talent, innovation, entrepreneurship, creativity and knowledge hub of the world. He has been appointed as Special Distinguished Advisor to the Africa Union's Student Council and a mentor for the African Entrepreneurship Award. He has initiated the African Unity for Renaissance and Knowledge Exchange series of conferences since the last six years. He is a founding scientific advisor to the African Solar Network, founding chairman of the Network of Ethiopian Scholars. Professor Mamo Muchi is a founding board member of Globelix, focusing research on the challenges of building African innovation systems. He has served as scientific board members in a variety of networks including Medalix. He has taken major initiatives for running doctoral and master's academy in various universities in Africa and all over the world. He has been appointed as a consultant on UNESCO's Higher Education, Research and Knowledge Forum. He has served as a postdoctoral mentor in the NRF National Postdoctoral Forum. Professor Mamo Muchi is the chief editor and in the editorial board of many scholarly international journals including the African Journal of Science, Technology, Innovation and Development, the Ethiopian Electronic Journal for Research and Innovation Foresight, EEJRIF, Innovation and Development among many others. Professor Mamo Muchi has published in the areas of International Political Economy, Development Economics of Innovation and the Making of African Systems of Innovation, and New Technologies and Development Across Disciplines. Since 1985, he has produced over 375 publications, including books, chapters in books, and articles in internationally accredited journals and entries in institutional publications. get our youth, our young people, to become innovators, entrepreneurs, inventors, and, uh, and how do we also get them to, to learn to work with each other, and so on. I think the uh, critical question is, there are initiatives we have. For example, we created the African Talent Hub. Uh, we have the African youth, the youth that you are also a member. I think I, I, I recommended you to rem represent the North, <laughs> the African. <laughs> um, but I think we still are, uh, and we also have the Africa Young Graduates and Scholars um, Network, which is, uh, we just run it uh, about, which is so nice because they come from all over Africa. And so we have that. We also have Africa Leaks, the African, uh, network on the economics of innovation learning building uh, competence building so we we have um, different networks now they also created what they call nigeria leaks and then uh, sako leaks from uh, burkina faso so there are networks that have been created 
And the interesting question now is not to multiply the networks, but to actually deliver something practical, something tangible, something measurable, something usable, applicable, something that we can say we, we can use it as a model, as an example, so that we can share it with others. I think something like that is important. One thing I am a bit worried about is that uh, the inter-university linkages in Africa are also very, very uh, low. For example, as I said, inter-African trade is very low. Inter-mobility, see, mobility is not between different universities in Africa. It's between uh, Europe. You know, the, uh, the, the so-called Francophone countries, they like to go to France. The, you know, this kind of thing. Uh, I don't know whether they want to come to Algeria. They, they probably want to go to Paris. We have problems, genuine problems. So what we need now is to create inter-African university linkages, student mobility, even making students to spend at least one semester, even, even one year, to, uh, to in their studies in another university. If they do, they network. You see, networking will be created. So you will not just have a, a business or a venture or an entrepreneur uh, work by one person from one area, but you can interlink. If you interlink, it creates huge opportunity because it connects us all. So that ability we need to, to create. I, we still have a challenge. I mean, we uh, we did uh, for the Af we did try to create what we called the Europe the African Union Education Commission, Africa Union wide, and we wrote a proposal, a very good do document. I was also part of it, and then we submitted it to to. But they didn't uh, they didn't even give us a response. I don't know what these people do. I mean, they called it the African Union. That's the name. But what where they get all the majority of the money they get from the European Union, if they get the money from the European Union, the European Union decides, not them. So is it the African Union? I don't know. You see, we have challenges like this, serious challenges. That's why I'm saying that maybe with this digital technology, is there any chance we can, some of these problems we have, like the theft, the stealing, the corruption, is there any way we could manage it technologically? If we can't manage it with human relationship, can we manage it with technological relationship? That's why I like you to think about this digital. I know the digital can also cause cyber, all kinds of cyber crime can come through it, but that is another crime we need to handle. But first let's remove the, the physical, the human crime, then, then we then deal the new crime <laughs> with the cyber crime. I don't know. I'm just uh, wondering about the human uh, ch challenges we have. I really think there is so much opportunity to do. I mean, the ability of the students is not a, a challenge, a problem. All of them are, uh, are are capable. From the students I do here in South Africa, they are amazing. Honestly, I mean, I don't know why they had the apartheid and everything to, to tell them they are, they, they, they are not intelligent. They're very, very good. They do many, many interesting things. I get, I learned a lot from them. I tell them, be my... My, uh, be my teachers, you teach me, educate me, create something. If you create something, then I learn. If you don't create something, I don't learn. So I want you to be my teachers, I tell them, and they do it. Uh, both Dr. Fatten and Dr. Margaret, I was telling them uh, that uh, we have a network, it's called African Solar Energy Network. Do you know how blessed we are in Africa? The, the, only the, on the Sahara alone, the solar energy that is on the Sahara, if we know how to tap it, right? And be able to develop the technology to transform it and share it. Not only would we have free electricity for all of Africa, we can also give free electricity to all of Europe. There is no reason why we, we Europe is very close to us. It's very close to the, the Sahara Desert. 
you know what? Not only can we do that, if we know how to tap and capture and preserve, all right, store that energy, solar energy, we can also create that entire area, the Sahara Desert, will not be a desert. It will be a green land. It will be farming. It will be biology. We'll be using it. My problem is we don't focus. If look what is happening in the in the area where we are in the northern part, look what's happening to Libya and uh, Western Sahara and Morocco. We have challenges. We don't know how to work together. We don't know how to unite with each other. And then also you, you also see the northern part, the Sahara. I mean, I mean, Algeria was a country that very, very strongly supported South Africa. Uh, Morocco too was uh, involved. All of them, they were like that. But at the same time, now you also have what you call, you know, uh, Sub-Saharan uh, Africa said we we should learn how to work together, unite with each other. It doesn't we we shouldn't use race, language, religion to divide us. No, we should not do that. Color does not make one human another not human. No, we're all we're we are one human race. Yeah, all right. There's no it's it's not good to divide ourselves like that. Then what has happened? Others external forces like the division. They exasperate the division because by the division, they are able to manipulate and take advantage. So we have not yet removed that problem. If we do, trust me, the sky is the limit. We, the, just the energy just said for all of our people, they will have too much electricity. Just on the Sahara room, on the solar energy, I just mentioned, but there are other forms of wind energy. There's many, many things. There's so many sources to create energy from. Mm -hmm. There's many, many sources we can do. And all we need to do is what I'm saying to you is the youth, 70% of you, I like you to engage to become learners, not repeaters of what others have said, but creators, inventors, innovators, and solvers, problem solvers, not problem creators. I want you to be, be engaged in that direction. And that's exactly what I'm doing here in South Africa. I've created a course called Advanced Creativity on Innovation, Entrepreneurship, and then uh, Technology Venture Creation. And what happens, a lot of the young people, the assignment I give them, you know, I cannot give them a mark to pass unless they actually do something to create a venture. No, no, sincerely, venture startups. If they do that, then they get marks. <laughs> if they don't do that, they get <laughs> zero. So. That ability, what I mean by so doing is I'm saying to them, I just want you to, to be uh, real creators and learners, not, not just to repeat what I told you. Now, I don't want you to repeat what I said. I want you to learn from it and do something else. When you do something else, then it's uh, wonderful. That's the uh, kind of thing. So I, what I agree with you, a lot of our people do not have electricity, do not, do not have clean water, do not have sanitation. We have, a, and then, but we live in a continent that is so blessed by everything, by sunshine, by what, by everything. What don't mm -hmm. we? We have everything, yes. resources, yeah. natural resources. But what can we do? We are not able to do it. But but let's try. Let me challenge all of you, the youth. Please solve it. Let, uh, you become the solve the, the problem solvers and not the problem creators. Thank you. the indigenous knowledge in Africa is very rich. It's on every sphere. For example, in astronomy, we have the Dogon and universities, research universities, Carl Sagan, a professor called Carl Sagan from the university uh, in America recognizes the Dogon astronomy. Uh, again, Claude Sumner, a Canadian university professor, translated the book called Hateta, which is 
which created the first African Enlightenment, 200 years before the European Enlightenment was created the African Enlightenment. But a lot of the, the philosophers, Nietzsche, all of them, uh, Hegel, all of them, said Africans do not know how to reason. They, don't, they are mystical. Uh, that's what they were saying. But long before they did it, an African did it. His name was a philosopher called Zerayako. Who recognizes it? A European, uh, an, a Canadian prof professor who learned, he spent time and so on. Another professor uh, from Sweden, many of the other pro professors from Europe and others came and they are amazed. For example, a Swedish professor, Steven Rubinson is his name, and we, rep I was with him in the, two, the, the second millennium of Ethiopia, the Ethiopian calendar, with the Ethiopian calendar. And he, I remember he, he gave in Oslo a big speech. There were about 2,000, 3,000 people. I don't know how many there were, were many. I gave a, also a keynote. He also was, we were both elected. And then when he spoke, I remember they gave him 11 minutes standing ovation because he said the alphabet, the Ethiopian alphabet, that we have, which is Ethiopian alphabet is also, call it African alphabet. Uh, it's better than the Roman and the, 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 the Latin alphabet, he said. It has no vowels, it expresses any voice. And at the same time, the calendar, he says, the Gregorian calendar is not as good as the way the, the calendar that we in Ethiopia use. He said like that, astronomy, Abu Shakar, there's a book in the ancient Ethiopian, again, manuscript. On, on astronomy, even the number of planets, all the stars, many of the things that were predicted by is incredible. But the problem is, let me just tell you, I don't want to go to all this mathematics, many things like that. Astronomy, medicine, medicine. I just want to give you one example, medicine. A German in the British Library in uh, King's Cross, uh, I was in the, in the library. I started reading in nine pages he wrote it. It's written by a German. He said all the pharmaceutical knowledge that we, the Germans got, got it from the ancient Ethiopian manuscripts. That's what he says. And I actually wanted to copy it and then even take a picture of it. And the librarian said, no, 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 you're not allowed. So next time when I go to England, when this coronavirus is over, the one thing I'm gonna do is actually write it down, sit down and write it down and then read it to all of you what the German wrote. All I'm saying to you is they all acknowledge that there's a lot of creation and invention. Now our ancestors with all their challenges, their problems, they have created many things. But in the knowledge system, in our schools, never, we never included it. All the knowledge is we copy. We don't create, we don't acknowledge what was created and integrated with every other knowledge. That from, uh, I'm not saying that we should only use African knowledge. We can use the whole world, world's knowledge, but also African knowledge must be included. That we have not done. That's why I say the education system itself has to be an African education system, not education system copying, but African education system foundationally making it and then eventually building it from it. And then learning, we must be open to learning to anything about everything. That's uh, infinite. We should be infinite about this. There's not learning is infinite for all of us. That we should do. And something like that is what I, I, I like to suggest to you. And I think uh, there's a lot we could do. Yes, and we have a question now from uh, in the chat. Uh, now it's, it's, come, it's come out more clearly. And the question is, should Africa be moving forward instead of backward in innovation, given the escalation and persistence um, in wars and conflict? So she gives the example of Cameroon, Nigeria, Chad, where resources are being destroyed instead of maintained and developed. Yes. If you yeah. could just give a few remarks on that. So, and then we can wrap up. Very, very quick question. Uh, that is what has happened. Remember when Kwame Nkrumah uh, in 1963, he said Africa must unite or perish. They 
he said, if you, we really want to decolonize, we need to unite Africa. If we did not, we just created the state system that was left by the colonial powers and we take over the leadership and we become heads of states. I think he said, we'll continue to fight. And what happens? What he said happened. To stop it, he said, and also he said that the state system is not done, uh, it, it, it's not independence if we just retain the state system that's imposed on us, plus the boundaries. The boundaries are drawn cynically, you know? Uh, they are not, uh, if the country where I am now here, South Africa, uh, Botswana's are more Botswana's are in South Africa, Lesotho, uh, Swazis, they are more here in South Africa than they are in, in Swaziland, in Lesotho. Can you imagine? I mean, I mean, if you start, uh, luckily South Africa is not fighting by the grace of God, but imagine if fighting continues. I mean, that's what's happening in all over Africa. Families have been divided, borders have been drawn wrongly, cynically. And instead of overcoming them, as Kwame Nkrumah said, what did we do? We took them and then we did not decolonize. We remained recolonized and we have not yet moved ourselves out of colonialism. Trust me, this is the biggest challenge Africa faces. To recolonize, to completely get out of colonialism, we need to unite. Unity is critical. It's very, very important. We should not also delay it until 2063. No, 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 no. We should do it now. The, we have the African Federation movement. There's some of my, uh, and I'm also there with them. They are thinking within 10 years, it should be done. I don't know whether we could do it, but that's why I, we need to reach out the young people. And we should, all should say, we should have a movement. In fact, you should all be promoting it, all the young people. In fact, now I challenge you, you should have even a strong petition, a strong social uh, agenda, social movement, where you say, let's unite Africa, let's use this, this current technology to make sure that Africa's resources, everything is for the people of Africa. Even all these things, if we could do that, then I think things from the war, from the current war, from coup d'etats, from corrupt leaders who only are interested more in their pockets rather than in the servicing the people, serving the people is number one. If you are a leader and if you don't know how to serve the people, no good. A teacher too, I'm a, supposed to be a professor. If I'm a professor, I'm there to serve you, the students. If I'm there to hurt you, I'm useless, trust me. And luckily I have been nearly 40 years. I haven't done anything wrong, I think. I don't know, maybe I have done some wrong, no, no, no bad wrong. Because I want, I respect the students. I want to make sure that they when they shine, I'm happy. I feel that is my salary. When they are not happy, I am unhappy. That is, must be the way we should be. If our people are unhappy, I should, you should feel hurt. If they are happy, you should feel you have achieved. We should have leaders like that. We don't have leaders like that. We have leadership poverty. We have leadership curse. And we have a serious, serious problem in Africa. We need to come out of that. And look what has happened in, in, in Nigeria. You know, Nigeria produces oil. Nigeria produces the, the how many engineers does America have from Nigeria? Thousands, three or 300,000 I hear. Huge numbers. What did the, when they tried to say the, the, the Nigerian oil should be lubricated in, uh, uh, in uh, America, why did they do it? Because the leaders, they were fighting for, for, for money. In, and what did they say? Nigeria has no engineers to fabricate the, the oil in Nigeria. Can you imagine? This is what happened. This is wrong. I mean, can you imagine what happened to Nigeria? And then what happens? They just, uh, leaderships among themselves taking all this. And also the, inter, the, the ethnic divisions, you know, the Northern part, uh, you know, the, the, the Southern part, you know, this kind of thing. Very the oil region part, everything division. I'm just not happy with the way, with the way our countries have been suffering. When they should be doing fantastic things, yeah. Edegwe, when he first came to leadership, he stayed only three years, and he said he now is enough. He's done a good job. But he also wrote a book in 1937, 
Renaissance Africa. I have read uh, his book. It's uh, fascinating. He's a Nigerian for all of Africa, he thought. But a leader like that left quickly. Which kind of leaders came? The wrong ones. Then you have problems like that. Chad, we have problems. Central African Republic. I was once uh, asked to give a lecture in the university. I couldn't. I had to be on the security all the time. The same thing when I went to the DRC Congo. The same thing. Security. I feel I feel I have to be in security. Can you imagine? I don't do anything wrong. Why? Why should they put us like that? I think it's a big problem in Africa. We need to change this. I'm now saying to all of you, is there any chance if we can not do it by human skills, can we do it with technological skills? Can we solve some of these problems? That's what I'm just suggesting. Uh, I'm not saying practically exactly what we can do, but we can use different technologies and how we can use them and apply them is an interesting question we need to, uh, uh, to look into do research, find solutions, and just go ahead you know, very dynamically to make sure that we really resolve Africa's challenges. Because we have everything, as I told you, the problem we have is just all these relationships that are wrong with selfish agendas and foreign interest interventions and many things like that. We need to avoid that. Thank you very much. Sorry for taking too much time. Um, it's not the Africa Innovation Week. This is... Uh, there was Chris, uh, the, the Center uh, for uh, Research on Innovation System, but we did it about 15, 16 seminars. Now we're continuing it with putting Africa first, the making of African innovation system, another six. So I, I send you the link. It is 1296 there, sachi.org, like that. I look at it, look at the link. Okay. And I, I, I please send it to all your students. They, if they want to participate, it's very good. They can participate. And uh, we'll be running it, and it will be very nice. So mm. we are doing, yeah. There's also some some friends here. There's uh, Ababao Abibo, is he there? And Professor Stephen Little, if they are there, they should say some. I think they should get to know you. And the Ethiopian Tribune also, I don't know. I just saw some in the chat book. Yes, if they want to say something, it'll be nice before we leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. thank you, please. Yeah, I think Professor Mochi touched, touched on um, an issue about pathways because you know there's been an assumption in the past about development has a particular set of sequences which are based on the if you like the you know the Western Industrial Revolution. <laughs> Professor Mucci points out that technologies now are, are, are different. That there are perhaps pathways that can emerge from interaction across the continent. Um, I think there were two, <laughs> a number of issues we heard about the connectivity and a lack of electricity, but there's also the, the kind of colonial legacy of severing of, of earlier relationships that have to be rebuilt. And we have the issue of the way that Francophone Africa seems to be controlled through the post-colonial currencies, which determines the finance, which determines the resources for development and so forth, which are really pitched towards all the needs of metropolitan France and the needs of the uh, those countries. Um, I think there's, a, a, there's quite a range of areas of, of, of consideration. So I think as Professor Mucci says, the more that people can compare their situations, contrast, connect across Africa and not constantly re referencing out, drawing in, um, if you like, from the African diaspora concept behind the, the, the talent hubs and um, return talent funds to bring in um, African understanding of external opportunity, but equally equally important is this, this sort of interaction. Um, um, I'm a great believer in building associations from the bottom up and not trying to impose them top down. And maybe that's why the, I think the Japanese had a, a, an idea of middle up down. You start in the middle and you work up and you work down. So I think we need to, um, share some of that thinking and try out these ideas. Yeah. This is this is better to create than building a house or a restaurant or a, a hotel or... <laughs> you understand? This is better because it's reaching out the young people. 
the, you're not believing the backlog we have. We are now we are now producing seven issues. I'm now asking to make it eight issues, nine issues, it may, because the number of people that send to this journal is incredible. Okay. It's many, many. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very popular. Now it's. Uh, I think I feel good. I'm happy I came to Africa, because uh, just because we did something like this with all of you. I really appreciate also Steve, Professor Steve Little for attending. Uh, there are all people I know. There's a PhD student of mine called Ababa Abibo. He's in Gonda University. He's attending. He's still there. And uh, I'm just happy to see all of you. Thank you so much. You're all lovely. Keep strong, keep safe, keep well. Be, be, don't uh, ignore my, my uh, sincere request that you make the difference for Africa. You, the youth, you're young. You must do the job. <laughs> don't don't go for all these older people. They they have failed already. So only you. <laughs> you haven't failed yet. So I don't want you to fail. So do it. Yes. We can, anyway. Keep strong. Be safe. How is wealth? How is wealth? So be healthy. Yes. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.